you on those airplane flights and people always want to talk business, yeah, those are on the red eye. So why not call this the red eye conversation and just talk about whatever's happening in the culture. So today, we're going to talk about that Drake album. Yes, that Drake album. Honestly, never mind. Flight safety card, which we now ask you to read before takeoff. Thank you for your attention and we wish you all a pleasant flight. Yeah. It's Punch. You don't know who I am. I don't know where you've been. Uh, all of this cool shit, man. Curator, DJ, uh, tour DJ. I've, I've, I've got to play a lot. Uh, creative director, this is 50, over 150 interviews on the internet. Presently, creative director up at Spotify. Got my own show on Spotify Live. All the cool shit you could imagine. Co-producing that with Complex. A bunch of things. So, tune in, okay? This is the Red Eye Conversation, okay? You know when you're on those airplane flights and people always want to talk business? Yeah, those are on the Red Eye. So, why not call this the Red Eye Conversation and just talk about whatever's happening in the culture? So, today, we're going to talk about that Drake album. Yes, that Drake album. Honestly, never mind. So... Getting this right clear. Honestly, never mind. So Drake starts today with the first reaction where everybody wants to go, yo, what's up with Drake? And Drake says, quote, quote, unquote, it's all good if you don't get it yet. And that right there is the one line that made me go, I got to talk. Because I get it. If everybody wants clarity on what's up with this album and why it is what it is, number one. We have to think about who Drake is. Greatest of all time. Seven in studio albums. I want to be reminded, which I thought it should be more, but thank, um, let's start here. Thank Me Later 2010. Take Care 2011. Nothing Was the Same 2013. Views 2016. More Life 2017. Scorpion 2018. Certified Lover Boy 2021. And honestly, never mind in 2022, right? Then in between, you got So Far Gone in 09. If you're reading this, it's too late, which I thought was an album, but should have been 2015. What a time to be alive with Future 2015 again. And Dark Lane demo tapes, which we get it. That was 2020, right? Right. So I, I repeat, Drake says, it's all good if you don't get it yet. But why wouldn't you get it? So I look at everything like this. Drake likes Steph Curry, man. Like I told everybody, if Drake would have put out an album that was full of trap music and rap hits and Chase the Summer, it would legitimately be like Steph Curry joining the three-point shootout next year. I swear to you, it would literally be like Steph Curry said, you know what, I'm going through the three-point shootout. We all know he's the best shooter of all time, as we know Drake is the best artist of the generation, arguably the whole time. I just don't want to start the arguments and go there. But if this generation hands down, right? Right, cool. I know some of y'all are, oh my God. I don't care. I need y'all to listen. In fact, I think y'all might need to really, 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 really digest something really fast. How many summers has Drake truly controlled? If Drake has been out since 09, it's 2022. That's at least 13 years in a row where Drake has had a hit record every single year. Multiple hit records, right? Smash albums. Every single one of his albums have debuted number one. Y'all want more stats? I'm going to give you more stats. I'm going to give you more stats. More. 139 singles. Ridiculous. Um, it's With over 170 million records sold worldwide. With over 170 million records sold worldwide. It's, it's unbelievable. You know what I'm saying? 10 number one albums on Billboard 200. 10 number one hits on Billboard Top 100. He's been the artist of the decade in the 2010s. We know this. On, on, on the list, you know all these lists, they got him at 16th greatest artist of all time. The RI, the RIAA, pardon me, ranks him as the top selling digital artist of all time with 163 million in the United States. He has the most number one singles on the U.S. Hot Rap Songs chart, the chart, and with 15 and the most number one singles on the USA um, Hot R&B and Hip Hop Song chart. With 19. That's just to rattle off a bunch of stats, just in case you needed to be aware of like the power of real Drake, right? But what I really wanted to dig in is why the album? Why is it that so many people on the internet send a shade? I'm gonna give you clarity. The real reason why they're giving shade is because they don't get it. But Drake says it's cool not to get it. You wanna know why Drake says it? Because he knows that there's a bigger picture. Now, Virgil Abloh. The former creative director for Louis Vuitton. 
Kanye's best friend. We know it. The creator of Off White. Now, a lot of people don't know that Virgil was also a DJ. A lot of people don't know that. Um, Virgil was actually a very good DJ. A little unique. He used to dig in his bag. He used to like that, that turn up rap shit. And he used to love house music. House music. Open format. Free. Good spirit. Feeling good. And wait a second. Honestly, Nevermind is dedicated to Virgil Abloh. So is there any time that anybody is actually taking just a little bit of thought and go, why would Drake dedicate his album to Virgil and then try this new genre? I start to peel back, right? Now, for people that don't understand and don't know, Virgil not only was a DJ, he was like a DJ's DJ. You feel me? Uh, he had a collab with Pioneer, which is like the number one DJ brand for like the turntables. You know, everybody always goes, yo, what's up with the turntables? Yo, I want to, I want to, I know how that go. I miss DJing sometimes too. I can't really. But real shit. Virgil had a partnership with it. He made like a white and an orange one, which is crazy, right? But that's how much he cared about DJing. He cared about open format music. He cared about house music. He cared about dance music. Now, Drake does this album. It's not rap. Not reggae, not Afrobeat, we know it. It's open format, it's dance, house, it's infused with everything, right? And it's dedicated to Virgil Abloh. So I start to think and I go, I get it. Drake was like, yo, why don't we do the music that Virgil would have vibe with? Yo, this is probably the vibe one day they was out kicking it. Drake was out seeing the vibes and goes, this right here is what I need for my brother. Let's do it, right? That's what I truly think the core is. When we dig into the album, we start hearing it, and you start to wait. You're waiting for the rap verse to hit, and it doesn't hit. And you go, ah, oh, this isn't it. But the reality is this. We got to start looking at music and judging music by one initial point. What was the artist's intention of why they recorded that? Like, let's talk, uh, anybody, anybody. City Girls. You know why City Girls are great? It's because they make music for ratchet single women, no? They make music for single girls that's on fuck niggas, all that shit, right? Right, 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 of course. So when they put out music and it connects, isn't that the point of why they did it? So then that's why their music hits better. Because they're not aiming for men to like them. They're not aiming for uh, business women. They're not aiming for it. They're aiming for their demographic and they hit that motherfucker every single time. It's like magic. They hit it every single time. That's why City Girls are great at what they do. Same thing with Beat King, Ass Shaking Music, you know it. Gucci Man, Migos, Trap Music, we get it, right? Pooh Shiesty talking directly to the hood. ESTG directly to the hood. Lil Baby, right, 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 right. Drake wanted to put out an album and talk to a certain group of people. This is not for the people that's angry at the bottom. This is not for the hood to be like, let's turn up. This is for vibe. Now, I, I'm going to be real. There have been whispers. Little Yachty was hinting at it the other day that Drake has a nine-figure music deal. Think about what I just said. Everyone's talking about Drake has this nine-figure music deal. Nine figures. So if Drake got a nine-figure music deal, don't you think life's starting to feel different? Let me tell you something. Drake said a line on the Jack Harlow record, uh, Churchill Downs. He said, I'm making so money, so much money, my music's not even relatable. I swear that that was one of the hardest lines I ever heard Drake say. You know why? I believe him. When you make so much money, does it ever get to the point that you might actually not be relatable? It's like when Jay-Z was like, yo, I'm in the clouds. I can't hear y'all up here. We agree. When you get so filthy rich, when life is... Yo, Drake gambles 100000 to a quarter million a day. We looking at it on the internet. Roulette, FanDuel, fucking... It's going ridiculous. DraftKings, I don't know what he's doing. He's betting. I'm seeing him. Sometimes they're so, they ridiculous bets. But at the end of the day, when you're so rich, does it even matter? Does it really even matter? So I just say all of that to just peel back. Like, Drake is in a different vibe. And I think Drake just wanted to open up the vibe for everyone. They joke in it, say it sounds like this store music, that store music. You want to know why it sounds like that? It's because those stores want you to be in a vibe. 
Drake is making traveling music. Life feeling good music. If you ever get a chance to be on a boat music. Dancing. Like when's the last time that we danced? Like got up. Not just a routine for TikTok. I'm talking about dancing, vibing. Just in the zone. Even a little bit of drug music. There's some Ibiza flair in there. I know everybody talking about EDM. This year. It's not even fast enough for it. There's a vibe. But I think it all makes sense and all comes together. Drake knew that Virgil was on this time. Drake, Drake felt it. He probably know things that we don't know. Maybe Louis Vuitton was going to go into a different direction soon with Virgil. Maybe something was happening that us regular people, unnine figure people, didn't know yet. And all I just wanted to do with this whole video is open your mind just a bit. Just a little bit. Maybe Drake really knows what he's doing. And you just got to give it time. People are judging. The album. the album came out last night at midnight. It is 9 o'clock the next day. It's not even been out for 24 hours. And people, oh, this is trash. Oh, it's great. Just give it time. I see the masterpiece in it already because I understand that it ain't about what's happening right now. It's about how it's going to affect music. How it's going to affect music from this point forward. I'm just saying. The Virgil dedication. I think it has a lot more of a heavier influence than what we're giving credit to. Just something. I know as time goes on, we're going to hear that. I just want y'all to remember where y'all heard that point first. Virgil was a DJ. After this, after you look at this video, if you got to this far, Google Virgil DJ set. Go see it. That boy turning up. You know, once you're in art and hip-hop and culture and rap, you've been around Kanye so long, you've been around this, we know that this is all in there. So I just, you know, I just wanted to just open up just a little bit. I know y'all like being hard on Drake. Right? Y'all like being hard on Drake. I know everybody was bad at him, but when Drake came on and said, if I want two of them, then it's a threesome. If she alone, then you know she a freak one. Because if it's an escort, just know it's a police one. <laughs> Listen, he was sneaking him in there. I'm telling y'all. Oh man, he was sneaking them in there. I, I I don't got anything wrong to say about this. I'm ex I'm extremely excited, and I just look at it like this: music is a vibe. Not every single album needs to be the album that every single person listens to 24 hours a day. Sometimes the album is there to like sit, and then you get in that vibe, and then you connect with that album on a later date. I know that 444 didn't hit me initially. It made me think back. Then when I started buying property and I started wanting to invest, started to really understand just money better and wanted my friends to do more, 444 hit me different because Jay-Z was in that mode. Like, I got so much I want y'all to see. At first, I was like, the fuck is he doing? I didn't get it because you got to be in that mode. I'm going to leave y'all with this little gem. You know, when somebody breaks your heart, right? I know this all music, but just think about it. When someone breaks your heart, you just mad. You want that one person to just love you, to tell you everything. Like, yo, tell me. I just want to hear you. Somebody like, yo, I want to love you. I want to love you. You like, get the fuck out of here. I want shorty right here. This is who I love. You could be like, yo, I want to take you out. I want to spend on you. Why you don't ever spend on me? You're ignoring it, right? Because you're not really ready to hear nothing else but from that person. All that person got to do is give you a little bit of attention. You hype, right? It's the same thing with advice. It's the same shit with information. It's the same shit with music. If you are not welcoming the vibes, then the vibes cannot hit you. Because you only want the vibes from the place you want the vibes from. You sitting there like, I need more of this trap vibes. I'm in that little baby, that little dark zone. I need more trap vibes. So you're not ready to even take it in. If you went into this open-minded, it'll be a lot more free-flowing for you. And at the end of the day, while everybody goes, yo, this just feel like some shit I'm supposed to listen to on a beach. It feels like it's too rich for me. What if you actually did get some money? Wouldn't this be some shit that you want to rock out to? I'm just saying. Listen, it's the Punch the Red Hot Conversation. I'm going to see you, man. Take off with it, nigga.